I'm glad to be joined by Jumart Otobayev, former Prime Minister of Kyrgyzstan. Good to see you, Mr. Prime Minister. Always a pleasure to speak to you. You have been outlining the important challenges and opportunities facing Central Asia in your latest book, which is called uh, uh, Central Asia in the Great Game. So tell us more about what can be the role of these countries in the great changes that we are seeing today, whether it's geopolitics and beyond. Mm, actually, um, the role of Central Asia uh, last couple of years increasing. It's a little bit surprise for me as well, because we are economically, in terms of population, not as big as many others and uh, around. But we are in the middle of Eurasian continent, surrounded by bigger powers. And uh, many speculate that there is a great game going on mm. about to get Central Asia to one side or another. So the book is stated that we, uh, as a landlocked region, mm. have to be friendly to everyone our immediate neighbors, our far neighbors, and whatever speculation going on that uh, bigger power wanted to organize Central Asia against anybody, it is not true. We always telling that we always will be friends to everyone around the world. Mm. You talk about Central Asia being an important player today. Uh, this has a lot to do with the uh, sanctions that the West uh, has, the has on um, Russia, for example, and uh, the geographical location of Central Asia. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the Belt and Road Initiative has been counting on Central Asia to be an important uh, corridor. The so-called middle corridor, of course, came into being. But at this point, how do you see these two things, very different in nature, are impacting what you describe? Now we're observing the process of deglobalization. What does it mean that some countries, some jurisdictions erecting barriers mm -hmm. against free trade, for instance? And I claim that sanction is recognition of defeat. Those jurisdictions cannot compete mm -hmm. on free market. So what they're doing, they're erecting the border and bringing situation to the wor worse case. Nowhere around in the world, you know, if you look to the history, those who isolated themselves from civilization or development always were losing, if you look to the Roman Empire, whatever. So competition is the key. So in Central Asia, we believe that we will be competitive when we'll be joining a drive of humanity to high quality development. Yeah? In that respect, uh, we think that because we are post-Soviet state, we have high level of education. Mm. So our talents should work together with talents all around the world, mm -hmm. including our neighbors. Uh, we're proud of China's success in, in, in uh, modernization and high quality development. We have our talents should join overall drive of humanity to invent new things and uh, to bring our world, small world, to the more harmonious uh, 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 kind of organization of, uh, of right. our societies. The middle corridor, how well is it developing as a result of Russia-Ukraine conflict? Mm. Uh, first of all, uh, I name this what's happening between railroad trade between China and Russia, or China and Europe as Eurasian Rail Revolution. Uh, last year, 17,000 fully loaded trains passed the ter passed their trajectory. Mm. Uh, it means that two fully low trains per hour. Why? Because uh, transportation between two centers so in, of economic power, mm. Europe and China, uh, become, should be quicker. By sea it took sometimes a few months. But if you're transporting semiconductors, electronics, you n should not freeze your capital, mm. should do it quicker. And now train between Chongqing and Duisburg in Germany reach destination in 10 days quick through the Central Asia and Russia. What uh, Europeans said that we don't want to pass Russian territory. And they said, why don't we develop middle corridor, which means that Central Asia passing Caspian, South Caucasus, Black Sea, Turkey. And we say, okay, we can do it. It's shorter way. It's not anti-Russian move. 
mm. actually. That is what I want to underline. The more opportunities, the more competition we have also among logistic companies, better. So now we are talking about if European uh, customers want invest, if China want to invest, here again, West will meet East through Central Asia. Now we have seen the US, for example, over the past few years, uh, trying to work on their industrial policies. For example, Bipartisan Infrastructure Act, uh, Chips and Science Act, and also IRA, with the name of security and uh, economic uh, development. Uh, but the question really is, how much should we look at just within our own border? How much should we look at our border with others? The question about the goals for collective uh, actions on climate change, we have 2030, 2050, and 2060 uh, goals. These goals need to be met. So how do you see these kinds of uh, rise, what some can say, economic nationalism vis-a-vis the prices that we might have to pay if we cannot meet the 2030, 2050, 2060 goals and agendas. Uh, I already told earlier that uh, sanction is recognition of defeat. Right. It's not sanction, it's more tariffs, right? Yes, but it's sanctions. Tariffs is e equivalent to sanctions. Why tariffs included? Because of artificial in terms of overcapacity, the risking, decoupling, whatever. It's everybody understands that this is tricks. Yeah. So the economy of certain countries is not competitive anymore. So in order to protect so-called their own industries, they're mm -hmm. introducing uh, in import duties, which is killing overall competitive space in those institutions, in those jurisdictions. Uh, in that respect, uh, if you talk about climate change, uh, who will benefit if consumers will not get enough electrical vehicles? Or more our expensive plan, our solar plan? panels. That would no, be they, they, big they, they will not buy. No. They will buy less. Yeah? Much less. Uh, so, and, and also because of tremendous per, uh, success in Chinese manufacturing and industries, prices of those elements drop dramatically. Dramatically. If those elements will be covering our planet, what do you think would happen? Is it right uh, the, the solution for the planet or not? It's right, but somebody said, no, we will not have as much clean energy as planet require mm. because of egoistic, nationalistic or whatever reasons. Uh, but if you say yes, by formulating uh, sustainable goals, mm -hmm. yeah, A, then you have to say B, okay, right. we're going to make, generate as much of worldwide energy as possible, but this is not happening, because industry, industrially strong countries doing it, yeah, yeah, this, this is a sad story. But what about the Central Asian uh, countries? How do you see you can be benefiting to increase your competitive power out of this China-US competition uh, uh, rivalry thing, at least in the issue of uh, green technologies? Uh, if you lose competitiveness, then there is no way I mean, you will be I mean, a civilized partner of, uh, of, of humanity. Uh, especially I want to underline the issue of talents, mm. leaders, elite, uh, who should be working together for the invention and discoveries and introducing new elements of digital economy of the 21st century. Mm. And that way uh, things would be uh, much more friendly. We already work very uh, efficiently with uh, Chinese on solar, mm -hmm. wind, Yes. Yeah, as well as electrical vehicles. So we have very efficient political dialogue yeah, so that we will be on the same boat right. with China. Uh, 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 we, will, we want to be civilized members of the uh, world community 
in, in meeting our, uh, let's say, uh, commitment mm. to go for the uh, neutrality. Uh, in terms of energy, we are rich in uh, hydrocarbons. Uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization is going to have a summit uh, coming July. How do you see the reality of SCO? Is it going to be, as some media reports suggested, as a foundation for uh, countering, quote unquote, the West? Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, uh, in the beginning, was built as security organization, which consisted uh, Central Asian countries plus China plus Russia. And then gradually, but continuously, it became big, very big player on Eurasia. Mm. Um, yes, economic dimension, political dimension is there, but what I would like to underline that in the agenda of Shanghai Cooperation Organization, in the Charter, there is still security element, very important, mm -hmm. in Eurasia. It doesn't mean that we, it's, a, it's a friendship against somebody. No, it's, it's organizing network and, and, and how we will fight against two devils, two, two, huh? Three, 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 three yeah. Devils, yeah. Devils, Extremism. Yeah? Yes, this is our enemy. I remember years ago when the SCO is convening its uh, yearly uh, summit, you could see in the Western media talking about China and Russia competition within SCO. Um, and now you also see talks about China and Russia together against the West. Um, meanwhile, the, you also see articles uh, and the stories like China and Russia, even though they are walking very closely with one another. Um, so there are so many different versions. Mr. Prime Minister, you witnessed all the evolution over the past 20 to 30 years of politics and geopolitics in the region beyond. So how would you describe? You talk about China-Russia. Should it be competition? Yes. Healthy competition uh, in different areas. But again, uh, understanding that should be harmonious at relationships, ag not against each other, but cooperation in a few many other areas, right? Complementarity. Because, mm. for instance, uh, to my mind, uh, China and, and Russia have a lot of uh, something to add to each other. One country is rich on, on uh, natural resources, mm -hmm. hydrocarbons. Another one requiring. One is rich in human resources. Another one is requiring should be win-win, finding the uh, area where it could be cooperation, mm -hmm. collaboration. And those uh, uh, unions, uh, which exist already in different formats, they building trust. That is the key word. So Confucius said that if there is a lack of trust, mm -hmm. all talks are meaningless. Yeah. Such a great pleasure talking to you, Mr. Prime Minister. That's my discussion with Jumart Otterbayev, former Prime Minister of Kyrgyzstan.